looking for my rebound. I just want smoke. I'm looking for my rebound. I just want smoke. Uh -huh. I'm looking for my rebound. I just want smoke. I'm looking, 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 I'm looking for my reaper now. Oh, I found my reaper. I'm going to roll it up. I found my reaper. I'm going to roll it up. I done found all my reaper. I'm going to roll it up. I'm smoking, 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 I'm smoking my reba now. And for that, I'm going to Christian Hill. Let's start the show. Hey, what's up, everybody? This is your girl, the priestess, never your mistress, Shani Taylor. Honey, here's another episode of Conversations with the Priestess. So get your libations and get your ancestors and sit down and have a conversation with your girl. going on everybody it's your girl the priestess never your mistress here's another episode of conversations with the priestess welcome back i'm so glad to be with my life on this podcast my health and strength so glad to be back doing the goddamn thing finally got my setup like i want to so i want to let y'all know now trigger warning excessive cussing i'm going to be talking about some hard shit so trigger warning is going to get heavy examples of religious abuse and things of a sexual nature so but your girl is here and i'm glad about it so <clears throat> i pray that you're the last time since we met that all is well i'm sending positivity and love to everyone at this time and i must say that it is summertime and i'm thoroughly enjoying it so far my summer has been great i have been working for a good chunk of it but i have been finding time to enjoy myself and I've been doing little simple things like going to the park, um, hanging out with friends, taking myself out to the movies, or sitting my black ass at home doing absolutely nothing. And gratefully, I had um, a surprise visit um, from my brother, none other than Mr. A.J. Duro. Y'all give a shout out to him. Um, I was so glad to see him. He and I spent some time together and we chilled out and we showed all the way out. Um, and we we were going to record some episodes, but we decided to just chill out and relax, have a good old family time, brother and sister. And I'm so glad to have had my brother with me. And also, um, while that was going on, I had the opportunity to have my first Erica Badu experience. I really did. And it was one hell of an experience. I absolutely loved the show. Um, to open it up, she, um, to open up the show rather, DC's own The Junkyard Band um, came up and opened up the show and got the crowd up. DMV represented dc in particular represented very well you know it's not dc without go-go you can say whatever you want to say dc go-go is where it's at and if you say um uh go-go ain't where it's at baby meet me in the parking lot we can square the fuck up that's how we're gonna roll up in this place okay but yet and still i'm just excited that i was able to experience Yet another amazing artist. And if you know one of my other favorite artists, Duran Bernard, you know you know the deal with him and Erica Badu. I don't have to tell y'all that. If y'all don't know about it, just go ahead and research, okay? And also, Yasin Bey. He was one of the acts as well. And he showed his ass. And I love his quirkiness. I love Yasin Bey's 
quirkiness because he was just rocking out, honing his grab, his craft, not honing his craft. He was expressing his craft, representing who he is, and just doing all of his great hits and stuff. But the reason why we were all there, Miss Erica Badu herself, baby, oh my gosh, she opened up with her classic, on and on. And she did all of her great stuff. She did window seat, Tyrone. She called all of the Tyrones up. She did a little thing where the Tyrones came up, gave their name and stuff. You had a couple of people that didn't know how to follow instructions. But, you know, she was just having fun. But also, she did Next Lifetime, and she did one of my favorite songs by her, 82,000. That is one of my favorite songs. This world has changed. This world has changed. So I absolutely love that song. Erica Badu, Erica Badu has been a staple in my music forte for a long time. She's been in my repertoire for a long time. I've done a couple of her songs in different places, and I really live for her. I love her style. I just love Miss Erica Badu, honey. Now, I will say, it. I'm glad that I had this experience. I wanted to get off from work and lay my hair, let my hair down, and relax. And I did just that. And yes, your girl was nice and high like I am now during this podcast, smoking some tree. Okay, so yeah, I had me some good tree, honey. And <clears throat> baby, I had one glass of wine. I don't drink much anymore because your girl is getting older and, you know, me taking care of my mental health. I realized that I have struggled with alcohol addiction in the past and drug addiction. So, bitch, you have to you have to do what's right for you. So I did have one glass of wine and I was able to recover within a couple of days because I'm not a spring chicken anymore. But I thoroughly enjoyed myself. It was a real experience and I cannot wait to see her in concert again before she retires. But the fact that I'm not going to tell her age that she is a well-seasoned woman and she still looks good. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. And to see her dancing on the stage and how, how her band just flowed together and her background singers are out of this world. Like, come on. You know who her most famous background singer is, Mr. Duran Bernard. Like, come on now. He came from that stock now. Come on, honey. And I absolutely love the fact that she stayed true to herself. And she sounds just, mm, oh my gosh, like her vocals are just so crisp and pristine. Yes, long live Erica Badu. After it was all said and done and leaving the concert, I have a question, y'all. I have a question. To my cishet men, particularly my black cis men, why are y'all sucking for so fucking weird? Why are y'all so fucking weird? So mind you, I'm dressed in a nice black dress. Um, it showed a little bit of my chest, but it covered up my breasts. And it also showed a little bit of my stomach, you know. And I had on my nice little sneakers, my earrings and jewelry. And I'm waiting for my Uber and I'm very cognizant and aware of my surroundings. Number one, I'm a black trans woman. Number two, the political climate that we're in is a motherfucker. Let's be real. It's a motherfucker. And number three is late at night. So, you know, the freaks come out at night, but they're out 24 seven. So it's a crowd of people walking on the sidewalk. So I step to the side underneath an awning at a restaurant and this man walks by me and I look up and he's giving me this mean mug and just looking at me, but I'm guessing he was with his homeboy and his lady friend. This man turns all the way around and looks at me and just watches me. I'm looking at him, but I'm backing the fuck up and making sure I'm getting to near where this police officer was standing directing traffic and stuff in case I had to cause a scene or something. But thankfully he kept walking. And I'm like, dude, why? Why are y'all 
so fucking weird. Why are y'all so fucking weird? Why? Why must y'all be weird? Like, come on. Like, just do, just nile and nod and keep walking. You ain't got to do all this extra staring and creeping and shit. That's the type of shit that make women feel unsafe. That's the shit that make us feel unsafe when y'all do weird shit like that. Stop doing that shit. Get over yourselves, honey, please. But needless to say, thankfully, I was able to get in my Uber safely and bring my black ass home. Because I don't want nobody fucking with me in these streets because ain't nobody got time for that shit. This is not my first, this is not the first time where I've been in a situation to where niggas have been weird, okay? I'm not going to go into detail, but again, niggas do weird shit. And it just gets on my nerves, like, for real, like, like, okay, I'll tell you one. I will never forget, I was actually in a store getting gas, right? I paid for my stuff, got my receipt. I'm walking out to my car to pay for my gas, and this man says, ma'am, you dropped something. I'm honestly thinking I'm dropping, I dropped something. And when I, I look, he was like, here, you dropped this. He hands me a piece of paper like one of the little lottery ticket things with his phone number on it. Now, of course, because he's watching me walk out to my car, I did not throw it away at the gas station. I waited till I didn't drove clean to the other side of the neighborhood, like maybe a, two or three miles away from the store. And I threw that thing away, honey. Okay. Like, and it said that you have to do simple stuff like that because you don't know. I, how these men will react to you. You don't know how they're going to come at you if you reject them. So like, for real, honey, it's, and the thing is, honey, it really don't be that serious as to the crazy shit that they do. It really don't be that serious as to the crazy shit that they do. It really isn't that serious because I'm like, dude, I'm not interested. <clears throat> if I'm not interested then just take that L. You don't have to be disrespectful and you don't have to assault and or harm us like that, you know? And you don't have to unalive us like that. And it's funny that I'm bringing this up earlier this week on Facebook, now that I'm talking about this. Um, a young man posted on Facebook and was asking, well, ladies, why do y'all take our phone number if you're not interested in us? And... Several of us posted, cis and trans women, stated because if we say no, y'all might abuse, beat us up, unalive us, SA us. We don't know what you're going to do because we've seen so many things in the media about particularly black women being attacked and harmed because they said no to a man. Being a black trans woman, it turns transphobic real quick on social media when you reject someone's advances, not to mention the unsolicited nudes and dick pictures that we get. Baby, even on Grindr sometimes, that's annoying. Like, if you're going to send me a dick picture, make sure the thing ain't ashy. At least put some lotion on it, honey. Hell, like, for real, y'all doing too much. But needless to say, you know... I'm at a place now to where when I go out, I'm very aware and I rarely go out by myself now. Um, I walk to the store during the day. I, mm -mm. If I'm going out at night, I'm going with a friend. That's just as plain and simple. You know, I can't, the world is crazy out there and the world has indeed changed. But nevertheless, I'm still going to enjoy my life. I'm going to take a quick break. Here are some church announcements and we'll be right back. Fridays are about to get spicy. Conversations with the Priestess presents Not Safe for Work, Trans Sex Talk. It's about to get delightful. Are you ready? We just talked about my Erica Badu experience and weird motherfuckers. And speaking of weird things, I have been deconstructing from Christianity for about a year and a half, almost two years at this point. 
um, fully. I had started deconstructing in 2015 um, when I had stepped down, stepped down from pastoring. And there, there's been other instances where I questioned what I believed, but with everything that had transpired, as I discussed in Diary of a Church Girl, I fully started deconstructing and pulling away from the indoctrination of Christianity. And I'm glad that I have because it, it's, it's proving necessary and needed. And as I began on this journey of healing, reconciling my identity outside of religion, outside of what was taught to me. Now that I'm doing all of that, from the outside looking in, it looks weird. It really does look weird. And I said this on TikTok um, a couple, a few weeks ago, actually, of how weird it looks. And for a while, after I had left the church officially, I was still watching church on YouTube. Um, watching different pastors. I still listen to gospel, of course. Still sing gospel songs because they have a different meaning to me now. But looking at the, the doctrine of Christianity, specifically in the Baptist and Pentecostal churches, um, as I've come from those backgrounds in the black church, but not only that, being a black trans woman that was a part of a gay inclusive affirmative ministry, so to speak, or however, being in that being in that particular ministry, it wasn't really queer or gay inclusive because leadership, although they were cis queer, cis queer men, it was a level of discreetness and self hatred, just like the traditional church. Also, if not, mm, it's a whole lot of transphobia, transmissia, even in the gay inclusive ministries. And I recognize that cis queer men, there is a certain level of misogyny like no other in the cis, is, among cis queer men, unfortunately. And not only that, but the transphobia that comes from the cis queer community in the first place. All of those things culminated. I'm seeing this now. And for me, although you may be a gay or queer inclusive ministry or quote unquote gay church or however you want to identify, if you want to get technical about Jesus, Jesus was inclusive of everybody. He didn't discriminate. And I'm sure that if he was to come now and see a bunch of shit that y'all doing and these anti-trans laws, he would have a fit and beat the shit out of y'all. Let's be real. So, <clears throat> as I began to deconstruct and looking at all of this and looking back at church videos, praise breaks and things, it looks weird as fuck. And I've shared this with people. I was listening to some of the praise breaks. Now, we got to admit and be real. Some of the praise breaks that we have out there really does sound like circus music that with some of the riffs and runs that they do be like and come on some of the theatrics that people do during praise breaks and stuff like why are we running like a mad woman with our eyes closed and just spinning in a circle flailing our arms as if there aren't people around I've seen people hurt themselves in church proclaiming it was the Holy Ghost but the last time I checked, scripture tells us things are done in decent and in order. God and the Holy Spirit and all that is decent and in order. So what was your order when you fell and busted your ass? But not only the things that look weird, but the spiritual manipulation with the tithes and offering. Um, and now that I'm outside looking in, that principle no longer makes sense to me. None of it, it really doesn't make sense to me. Even the observance of the Last Supper where the the grape juice or the wine for some for some denominations or sex within sects within Christianity 
where the wine or grape juice symbolized the blood and the cracker symbolized the body. And now that I'm thinking about that, I really felt like, I really feel like that shouldn't have been taught to us as kids. Because when you think about the graphic nature, even being dragged to see the passion of the Christ and seeing how uh, Jesus was to have been brutalized, as I look at that now, that was damaging and traumatizing as fuck for us to commemorate a man that was basically tortured to death, beaten, because he wanted, he was, he came for the good of humanity. And when you really look at the story of Jesus, for me, there was no way he could have died for my sins. If that was the case, if God was all powerful, why couldn't God has done, had done the job himself? There's no, there's no rationality behind it. So he had to send his son to die for our sins. No, because when I look back at the story, Jesus went against the status quo and he challenged bigots and was a political enemy and he was a political prisoner and they executed him because he fucked with they stuff in my opinion and from what I've read now looking back at all of this it's weird as fuck because I'm like one of the things that I'm glad <clears throat> that I'm moving away from is the idea that I have to rush there's this idea in Christianity and I grew up with this that we have to work we have to work before night comes because when night comes, no man can work. Meaning we have to make sure we're doing our father's business, that we're doing kingdom business before Jesus comes and cracks the sky. And we've been waiting on him for a long time. And in, now in the place that I'm in, I'm like, how much worse does it have to get before you come and save us? Really tell us how much worse it has to get. And it's just so many things that they tell us God is in control with that I question. And now that I'm out of it and I've, I'm in therapy now healing and I began deconstructing and looking at the Bible from a different lens and practicing spirituality in a different way. It makes no sense to me and it really reeks of cult behavior and mind control because I the greatest form of witchcraft is mind control. And that's what Christianity has done. And now that I've fully accepted myself as, myself as the queer black trans woman that I am that loves to sing and loves sex, a lot of the rules and regulations about same sex relationships premarital sex even some of the things concerning slavery it it, it 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 seems more of a supremacist view of keeping the culture in a certain puritanical standard which we see how white supremacy and christianity go hand in hand and with that being said i'm glad that i left christianity i don't regret it at all very much glad that I love Christianity. One of the, one of the most horrendous situations um, that I have experienced has been in the church and has been at the hands of leadership. And that having that experience of being taken advantage of by leadership in not just finances, but monopolizing my time and even in a sensual sense, if y'all get what I'm saying, having that happen, it, it shook me to my core. And yes, my experience in Christianity and my experiences at the hand of leadership has caused me not to trust people anymore in that aspect. And in the last year and a half, I have grown so much. And I've really began to embrace all sides of me. 
And now that I can look back and look at how all, all the flailing of the arms we did rolling around in the floor, screaming and hollering, it was just an emotional outlet and us just flailing ourselves around for nothing when all we really needed was a therapist, someone to talk to, and to really see how we were being oppressed in that system. And I'm glad that I'm out. I'm glad that I'm out. And healing, healing, healing is of the essence. And I'm glad that I, that I'm on my wellness journey, on my healing journey. Yes, I still play with my tarot cards every now and then, and I do the damn thing. And I know that along with my transition, me living Christianity, that has caused a rift between my family and I. It's mainly been my transition, but I'm yet making it through. So, I'm just going to keep living. I'm going to take a quick break. I'm coming right back. Y'all live up and be free. Smooches. Okay, everybody, it's Michael E. Cullen II. And I'm Sesame Encarta from the All Too Real 2 podcast. We're passionate about movies, TV, and pretty much all things pop culture. Dive into the chaos of failed sitcoms, direct-to-video sequels, and the quirky realms of cinema and TV. Join us every Thursday for your dose of All Too Real 2 entertainment. We'll guide you through debates like whether Howard the Duck qualifies as a superhero. Ponder if Larry the Cable Guy could be the new rock or Schwarzenegger. Discover if some shows and movies should have stayed in the cutting room. Ever heard of a sitcom featuring that dictator with the funny mustache? Well, we watched it. We're dedicated to unraveling the peculiarities of pop culture, sometimes with awesome guests. So, if you're into the eccentric world of pop culture, listen and subscribe to All Too Real 2. Available wherever you find podcasts and on Age of Radio. I just want to add to y'all, um, add to everything that I say. Y'all, if y'all are smoking weed, make sure that y'all are drinking plenty of water. Because during the break, your girl almost damn near choked. Because she decided she wanted to hit a blunt. Um, made of hemp rat that thank you. I haven't had any tobacco or nicotine for going on four weeks now. I'm four weeks in. My nerves. Y'all pray for me. I need it. Send me love. But make sure you're drinking water. <clears throat> when you're smoking weed, because you don't want to choke to death, okay? And thank God for smoking clean. But I wanted to share with y'all some of the things that I've been doing for self-care. So self-care is very important to me. And ever since I learned how to take time for me, go chill out, go get your nails done, it's worked for me. So um, here lately, what I do for self-care, in the mornings when I get up, I make sure that I have enough time to meditate. And I love listening to binaural beats or soft, chill music in the mornings. Sometimes I may listen to sleep sounds. And this allows me to quiet my mind from when I wake up in the morning. Um, dealing with anxiety and depression. Sometimes it's hard to get started during the day. Start it during the day. And it's hard to find that motivation, especially if you're experiencing a depressive episode or you're depressed. But what I've started to do, especially when I'm coming out of depressive states and to try my damnedest <clears throat> to lessen the depressive episodes, I do that as a mode of self-care, but also I do yoga. And before this episode podcast, um, I was camming on many vids and I started doing yoga and it felt so good to do yoga. I was doing a sacral chakra um, based yoga and it worked wonders for me and it, it opened up my hips. It allowed me to stretch, but it also allowed me to release the tension from the day. <clears throat> and I, I needed that release, y'all. I really needed that release. And I'm glad I got the release. So, yeah. I've been doing yoga, but also I will take a hot bath when I get off from work. When I tell you a hot bath with some Epsom salt, lavender Epsom salt gets you right there. For those who may drink wine, um, 
have a glass of wine with you if you like. Light some candles. Prefer I, I like scent, scented candles when I'm taking my bath. But I also have a um, color projector light that projects like this beautiful ambiance of different colors. And it has like green little lasers that represents the stars. I put that in the bathroom with me and I relax and I might smoke my J, smoke my blunt, drink my water. <clears throat> if I decide to have wine, I'll have my glass of wine and I begin to relax. I may put um, the um, eye pack over my face or a warm rag over my face or on my head and just relax. Take in the sound and just decompress. And that really allows me to ground myself, ground myself. And I absolutely love it. For those of you who are listening, please tweet me at Yannick T Music on Twitter. My Yannick T Music IG is down indefinitely, but y'all can follow me on Instagram at CWT Priestess. Y'all reach out to me and let me know what is your self-care routine. So with that being said, y'all, I'm going to go ahead and end this podcast episode. Y'all live, love, and be free. Smooches! You're beautiful. You're beautiful.